So I get a lot of inspiration from my neighborhood because there's a lot of natural desert all around, which is lovely. But I also go up into the McDowell's. I can get to the McDowell's from here. Just take this path straight out and head to the trails. Painting is done here. I paint flat because it's watercolor. I do have my easel over here and that's where I draw because I need to get the perspective right. So I draw vertically, I paint horizontally. This is where I store the paintings that are done and the canvases that are prepped or kind of intermixed there. That's my idea board. And my commission studies are up there. Some color samples of various things. Um, I always do a quick color sketch of something that I'm gonna be doing right away. One of the things I'm exploring, I'm continuing to delve into what I started last year, which was the Serenity Collection, which are the pieces that have a white background. Um, and I'm going to put a different twist on some of those pieces, um, but nobody gets to know that yet. That's a secret, because I'm going to experiment first <laughs> before I release it to the public. Um, and then I'm also working on um, several pieces that are interesting shapes for standard subjects of mine. Um, I, often, I, I often have tall, skinny pieces, verticals, at the show. Um, usually they're of blooming agave or swaros or something that is traditionally a tall, vertical plant. Um, and this year I'm experimenting with shapes of plants and bird compositions that aren't traditional, like, a, for example, a tall, skinny piece that's of a prickly pear, so you wouldn't normally imagine something like that to be in that format. So I'm playing around with different shapes for some of my usual suspects, if you will. Sometimes what inspires a piece is somebody will say something and I'm like, that's a great title for a painting. And then I come up with a composition to go with the painting. When that happens, it's really, really fun. Usually, if it's something brand new for me, I will do several small pieces, sort of as tests, to see if I like the concept, to see if I like the color, to see if I like the style. And then I will launch into bigger pieces for the, for the types of um, concepts that I like the best. Like this piece, for example, started as a flying quail with a swaro on a much, much, much smaller piece. And I thought it would make a great um, sort of still life landscape combo if I uh, added a lot of other flora to it and kind of busted the background into a, a painting of its own, like a, uh, a, almost an abstract painting in the background. My collectors, pushback is what invited me to come up with a solution. Um, when I was painting on paper and framing, matting, behind glass, I got a lot of pushback from people who absolutely loved my work, but they didn't want glass. They didn't like the frame I picked. They didn't want mats around it. They wanted just the frame. So I decided I needed to come up with a way to paint without having to frame, um, without having to mat, um, something a little different. So I started by experimenting with some of the watercolor boards that are readily available. And, um, 
they weren't readily available then, but there were, this was, I'm talking like 15, 16 years ago. Um, but they were starting to come out like, oh, we can use Aquaboard, is this a new thing? So I started working with that a little bit and I got some pretty good results and um, I, I liked it and people were responding in kind. Um, but I was very limited in terms of sizes available because it only came in, at that point, it was in small sizes. You know, 18 by 24 was like enormous for Aquaboard. And I like to paint big. And so that was a big limiter. So then I started playing around with some of the off-the-shelf um, grounds that are also readily available. And I got pretty good results and I liked it and I was kind of moving along steadily but I couldn't get the vibrancy that I got when I was painting on paper. I, the saturation of color and so I, because of my background in science and engineering, I decided I was going to try and come up with a substance of my own. And so I experimented for several years before I came up with what I use now. Um, and it's a combination of four different things and I use them in a certain order, and that's what gives me the ability to do what I do um, in, in kind of a random, oh, look what I just discovered kind of way. Uh, I never anticipated coming up with something of my own, but I, I love it, and I get my custom canvases stretched for me in any size I want, and I put the preparation down on canvas, and I also use panels. These are on board here. Um, and I can use the same preparation for every substrate. So I can paint on almost every, anything with the preparation that I use. Um, and it's really opened up my collector base enormously. People have responded and now I'm, I mean, I'm selling big pieces like this. I'm putting them in uh, exhibits all over the place and it's just kind of fun. That I tend to paint um, with a lot of detail in my work and I can drive myself crazy with that because sometimes it's too much detail and and sometimes you lose the focal point of the piece because it gets lost in some of the detail. So one of the things I'm trying to do is back off from you know including every cactus needle or including every feather painted precisely on my birds so i'm going for a, a looser representation even though it's still representational and even though there's still a lot of detail i'm backing away from some of that because i think some of the art is lost in the representation so i like to have opportunities for the viewer to fill in the blanks, if you will. And if I fill in all the blanks for them with detail, then there's not much compelling to look at. As a watercolorist, um, you, you have to leave the whites. And so you paint around things. And so that negative space, it's called negative space. The negative space is just as meaningful as the subject. And so when I look at a piece of art, in a room, for example. I like to pay attention to the negative space around the painting in addition to just what the painting looks like on the wall. And one of the ways I wanna play with that is with different shapes. Another way is to play with collections of things, but not collections in grids necessarily, collections in different shapes and sizes. So I'm, I'm playing around with some of those concepts. I haven't done anything yet that's you know suitable for prime time but but i'm getting there so we'll see um come to celebration next year and you'll see some of the things i'm talking about because i've got a long list of things i keep a, a list in my studio of the sizes and shapes of canvases i have and potential titles and potential subjects and and it's an ongoing project for me when something comes to me i write it down so that i don't lose the thought or i don't lose the the idea uh, and then I come back to it when I finish a piece, I'm like, okay, so what's what's another idea that I'm gonna work on or try out now? And then I go into experiment mode. Yeah, I, I really like the, um, just the ease of the medium. I mean, it doesn't require any special cleaning products. It doesn't require anything special to mix into it to get it to do special effects, uh, you know, like liquid or any of the things that you have to put in oil paint um, in order to get them to do some of the effects that 
I do with watercolor naturally. So I, I don't know. I just, I love watercolor. That's the bottom line. 